If you are an introvert like me, you may be wondering if the actuarial career is going to be a good fit for you, or what if you're an extrovert? Well, in today's video, you are going to get your answers. By the way, I'm Bria, associate of the Society of Actuaries and founder of the Actuary Accelerator community, where we train future actuaries how to become top candidates so they can get their first actuarial job as quickly as possible. So let's get into the video. Three, two, one, go. Okay, so first off, let's really talk about what it means to be introverted. A lot of people get this confused, thinking that it means that you're shy or that you just don't like to be around people and talk to people. While that is true for many introverts, it's not necessarily what it means to be an introvert. So in my definition at least, this means that you really get recharged and re-energized when you are not surrounded by a whole lot of people. When you're introverted, it really takes a lot of energy out of you to be around people and be talking to a whole bunch of people. And that is what it's like for me. I am definitely an introvert. I really recharge being alone, having time to myself, just doing whatever I want. And that's what refreshes me and allows me to keep going through the day. Having to be around people for a whole day, that would really wear me out and I would probably want to go to bed very early. So that's the difference between an introvert and an extrovert and the actuarial career really can be good for both types of people. But in today's video, I'm really focusing on the introverted side because I know a lot of people getting into the career do tend to be more on the introverted side and sometimes it can be difficult to know whether or not this career is going to be good for you or not. So it really comes down to the type of position that you choose. If you are someone that wants to be more extroverted in your actuarial role, I am sure there are lots of opportunities out there for you. Um, consulting positions in particular probably would be the best types. Consulting actuaries tend to have meetings with their clients, they might do more presentations and such, but for introverted people you probably don't want to do that kind of stuff. You want to keep those things to a minimum. So a typical actuarial job will probably be good for you. I've talked on this channel many times about becoming a top candidate and if you are someone that is very specific about the kind of job that you want to get in the actuarial field, then it's going to be really good for you to work towards becoming a top candidate because that means you're going to have more options with the specific jobs that you want to get. Now in most actuarial positions you probably are going to be working alone quite often but some of them will have more interaction between your team um, and right now after everything we've gone through over the past couple of years there are also quite a few actuarial roles where you're working at home and really don't have to talk to people very often so for introverts like us that could be a huge plus for the actuarial career. But again you can make this a more extroverted career if you want to. There can be time for socializing. There can be time for going out for lunch or maybe dinner after work with friends from work, colleagues. You can attend actuarial events and that all helps to make it more of an extroverted career if you want to get into those things. Now for me, I didn't want that. So I made my career more introverted and you can too as well. So I've been working in actuarial roles probably for about six years in total and various different positions. So I wanted to kind of go through my typical day in an actuarial role here so that you can kind of see how it might work for you to make sure that your level of introvertedness or extrovertedness, I don't know if those are words, but would be beneficial in this type of role. So first off, before we get into that, I do want to say that it's not like you are not going to be having to talk to anyone. I think that's um, a bit of an unrealistic expectation if you don't want to talk to anyone all day. Um, you will have to talk to people. I had to talk to like the investments team, for example. I was talking to other actuaries. I was talking to my manager. I talked to the legal team. There's all different sorts of people that you will have to communicate with. Yes, you can do some of that through email, but a lot of the time it's easier and quicker to get those conversations done just talking to someone directly. So it might be over the phone, it might be in person, those things happen. But what I found, at least in my actuarial role, was that the majority of those conversations were just one-on-one. -on -one. You didn't have to talk to a large group of people. We did have some meetings where there might be four people, five people, maybe even larger ones where there were 20 people. But especially in the entry-level roles, you're not necessarily expected to do a lot of talking in those positions. So you can just listen in, get the information you need from that meeting, but you might not necessarily have to contribute a whole lot. As an introvert, that was always one of the things that I was constantly working on, was trying to force myself to contribute more in meetings because I know that it is something that can be valuable and shying back from that and not giving my opinions and my thoughts might actually hold the team back or hold a project back because sometimes I know things that maybe other people aren't aware of. So providing that insight and that expertise can be really beneficial. So it is something that I think as introverts, we constantly have to work on just to make sure that we're doing our job to the fullest and making sure that we're contributing in the best way possible. Okay, so let's go through 
kind of my typical day to day. How it would usually start was I would get into work probably around nine o'clock, but a lot of companies do have flexible start times. So maybe you could get in between seven o'clock and nine o'clock in the morning. And then if you get in early, you can leave earlier as well. I tended to like to get my sleep, so I went in a bit later. But anyway, after that, usually the morning was spent on the computer just doing a project or working on maybe our year end or month end tasks that we had to do. So the morning would typically be spent on the computer. I may spend some time chatting with a team member or something if I ran into problems, had some questions, that sort of thing, but nothing really major. Now for me, I'm someone that can't just sit at a desk all day, so I really took advantage of my lunch hour time. In my specific company that I worked for, which could be different in really any company, you didn't necessarily have to go take your lunch elsewhere. You could eat lunch at your computer, so I chose to do that. I wasn't someone that wanted to go socialize at lunchtime or anything like that, so I would try to get some extra work done so that I could leave earlier by eating my lunch at my desk. A lot of the time, I wanted to get some exercise in, get up, move around a little bit too, so I would go for maybe a half hour, 40 minute walk around lunchtime as well, listen to some podcasts, one of my favorite things to do, and that would just help me refresh, re-energize, get moving um, so that I could perform at my best in the afternoon. Then in the afternoon, I would typically be working on projects again, always at the computer. Uh, maybe we'd have a meeting or something. Maybe I would meet with my manager or have a small team meeting. It really varies day to day and it wouldn't be every day that we would have this kind of thing. And again, I did try to challenge myself to contribute. As I got more comfortable and further into my career, I found that I was contributing more and more. So if you are someone that's very early in their actuarial career or if you're just considering the career, just know that you don't have to necessarily be contributing tons of ideas right from the get-go. You can take time to ease into that. Now, for me, a lot of the time I didn't go out to team events if they were after work hours. I didn't go out for dinner after hours, that sort of thing. I just, as an introvert, didn't like doing that sort of thing. So that's totally fine. Um, sometimes there were events where the whole team was going, so I kind of felt obligated to. I especially like to attend things where it wasn't a lot of one-on-one -on -one interaction, where we could just kind of do something, like maybe the golfing event. We had a golf event where um, a whole bunch of team members just went and played golf, even though I have never played at all before this event. It was just a fun way to kind of have an activity to do at the same time as socializing a little bit. So I like those kind of events. I think we did dodgeball one time as well. So that was kind of fun. I liked those as an introvert. It really takes the pressure off of me to just be constantly talking to someone. So those kind of things were actually pretty fun. And we would do those once in a while. And I think that is something fairly common for companies to do. Now for me, like I said, I didn't do a lot of social time at work, but I love to go in the evenings and play soccer. If you've watched my channel before, you know that that is one of my absolute favorite things to do. So my social time would really be playing soccer. Sometimes I would play for two or three hours a night. And yes, I would be doing an activity, but I'd also get some time on the sidelines and chat with my friends from soccer. Since I've known them for so long, it was easier for me to be in that kind of a social situation. Whereas um, I'm not as good at talking with someone that I just met a few hours ago. Since I've played soccer for so long, I have friends that I've known for five or six years, and it's fun to just connect with them on a daily basis. So that's what I did for my social time. And even though I'm introverted, I still enjoyed that. So by the way, if you are introverted and this kind of sounds appealing to you, then make sure you go check out this video next because being an introvert is not the only thing that makes the actuarial career good for you. There are lots of other things that you'll want to take into consideration. So this video right here will go through those so that you know that the actuarial career is right for you if you decide to get into it. And that is all for today's video. I will see you in two weeks from now. Bye.